I am going to show you today how to make um, knitted bracelets, much like this. I wrote a pattern. This is um, bracelet number two. There's two different styles of bracelets in this pattern. This one is number one, just uses the toe beads. Um, like this one, I had 30, uh, 36 rows of two, so 72 beads. Has a bracelet clasp. And uh, yeah, let's get going and I'll show you what you need to do that. First of all, I used the Loom Spec Silk Yarn. There's, this is a 25 gram skein and I already made a bracelet out of this. You can't even tell anything's gone. It, it'll make a ton. So um, I used that. I used some solid beads. These are just 6-0 Tohu beads. And then for this one, every other row, I used a bigger, more decorative bead. Um, where did they go? Let's see. Those look like this. Just so it's big enough to string the yarn through. Okay, and then you need something to pull the yarn through the bead, I'm sorry. Um, so I took, and I used just a sewing needle and a piece of thread, and I sewed it in a little loop. Um, but I think for this video, I'm gonna try using these dental floss threaders. We're gonna see how that works. So let me get those open. Um, we, we need a tapestry needle. Um, it can be like this. It can be blunt or pointy, it don't matter. Um, just so the eye is big enough to get the silk yarn through. Okay, we're gonna use size zero double pointed needles. Um, or any size zero needle you can really use. I just like the double points because they're nice and short. Um, you might want some kind of a little bead bowl. I use this one that I made out of clothesline. Um, and oh, the last thing is, is you need a, a bracelet clasp of some kind. These are magnetic. Um, you can use these or you can use um, the ones where it's a circle and you put a bar through it, either one. So yeah, here you go. And make a note that I put double rings on here, a little split jump ring. And then this ring here is one of those that's like a keychain, so that you don't have to worry about your, your knitting slipping through the split. So, you know, you wanna use this kind of a ring where you're gonna actually sew to, you can see you sewed right there into this ring. So you wanna be careful of that. So, um, I think that's it. I'm going to count out my beads and get ready to go. Thanks. Okay, I have my beads sorted out and I pre-strung a few. Um, and you can see them here so far. I'll show you how far I've gotten. Um, and I'm going two, one, two, one, two, one, all the way along. Make sure you have this correct. Once you start knitting, you cannot change your beads. They have to stay in this order. So to string them, I'll show you how I did it. I used that little blue floss threader and I put the yarn through there. So you thread it like a thread through a needle eye. And then you take that, and let's see, I need a big one next. And you thread your bead onto it. And right now, this thread could fall out of here really easy because the loop's so big. But if you leave your bead hang on it like this, um, that kind of locks the loop in. So don't push it all the way down until you're done, okay?
So in this bowl, I put 20 of the larger beads. Um, I know, oops, I only want two. I know this bracelet, I used 18 of the larger beads. So we'll, or did I use 16? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I only used 15 of the larger beads, but I'm going to string 20 on here because you can always have leftovers, but you can't add to it very easily. If you had wanted to add to it, you'd have to like wind some yarn off and go from the other end and add it in later. So you want to try to really make sure you have everything you're going to need now. So just poke this little threader through your beads. Pull them on and uh, get them all set up and ready for knitting. I'm almost there, so I'll just keep talking while I'm finishing up. These bigger beads can be a little tricky because they're so colorful, you can't always see the holes. And I'm going to end with two smaller beads again. Um, because that's where I want to start. You'll actually be going in reverse order. So here's the last one. If I can find the hole, we'll be set. Is that it? Oh my goodness, I can't believe. There it is. Okay. And two more. So, yeah, I didn't really count out the orange ones. I just dumped a pile in here out of the bag. So I'll put those back in later. So here we go. Slide them down so that the it's past the end. Okay, I can take the needle threader out. I can look at these. And you saw these holes on, on the bigger beads was kind of small, but it slides on here just fine. So double check at this point that you have two, one, two, one, two, one all the way up, ending with two smaller beads. Okay, now we're going to get to the knitting. So you slide these down a ways. Um, when you cast on, you want to leave a large tail so that later you can use that tail to sew onto the ring right here. So um, I'd say leave, you know, 15 inches or at least 12 inches. And then, uh, oh, you'll see, I'm working with a big old paw here. I had, I had surgery three days ago on my hand, and so I can't take this bandage off for a while. As you see, it's working really good though, so the surgery was a success. Okay, so all we need to cast on here is six. And yes, I'm a little clumsy. Yes, I'm a lot clumsy, actually. Um, so, good thing we only need to cast on six. Three. Four, five, six. And you saw, I just used the regular old long tail cast on. I do have 12 inches or so left. I don't know. Let's see. Oh, 12 and a half. Pretty close guess. 12 inches left to sew on later. Okay. So um, the first row and actually the first three rows are just simply knitting with slipping the last stitch with your yarn in front. Um, you want to do that because um, you want a nice clean edge. I don't know if you can see the edge there. It's a nice clean edge um, when you do that slipping the last stitch. I might be a little clumsy here, so I might go off camera to get this done. Just because of, of the injured hand, I can't hold things the way I normally would. And I don't want to look so clumsy and foolish on camera if I don't have to. So that's three. 
but I'll show you at least first row four five and now the last one we're going to flip the yarn to the front and then slip as if to purl okay so we still have six stitches on here okay I'm back again it looks like part of the tape I was totally out of frame so I am going to reshoot this some t it's a little hard when you're by yourself and you're doing overhead because you can't see what's on the screen. So um, I will continue where I think I, I was mostly out of frame. Um, what I had done so far was I cast down six stitches and then I knit the first three rows as in the pattern, which was knit until the last stitch, slip with yarn in front. So I got that far done. And then now the next row is where we're gonna start placing the beads. As you see, as you knit, the beads come up closer to your knitting. Just keep pushing them back as you're knitting. I'm gonna use these two smaller beads in the first row. I hope you see those okay. So um, we'll start. We'll knit two. One. Two. As you see, I got that big paw bandage off too. Just got a little Band-Aid on now. Um, and it, the finger's working uh, up to that much so far. So we're getting there. So then uh, after we knit two, we're going to slide one of those beads up. See there, you slide it up, place it right behind your knitting. All the beads are on the wrong side as you're placing them. So we slide that right up to the knitting and then we knit two stitches. One, two. Uh, we can look at the back front you don't really see anything but on the back you see there's your bead between the second and third stitch okay we're going to do that same thing again slide that bead up right up to right behind your knitting and then we're going to knit one and then as always we move the yarn in front and slip the last stitch okay so now you see two beads placed. So there's two stitches, a bead, two stitches, a bead, two stitches. Okay, we'll turn our work from the front side. You always just do the plain round. You're gonna knit the first five and slip the last one. So I'll go ahead and do that. You'll notice my knitting needles are shorter too, I think from the last video you saw, um, because the knitting at the table, they were getting in the way. So I took one of my bamboo needles, I just put it in the crook of the scissors, spun it around and snapped it, and I glued a bead on the end. So I have a short pair of knitting needles. Size zero, remember, we're using for this. I mean, if you're extremely tight knitter, you could probably go up to a one. Okay, last stitch with yarn in front, slip. Okay, and we'll turn that. And the next one, you always know where you are by the next bead. So I know the next row, because it's a large bead, is going to be um, knit three, place bead. Yeah, it would be better if I didn't have all these beads in the way. I could probably tension my yarn a little better. You should do that. 
So you want to keep them slid down out of your way so you can tension your yarn. Okay, slide this bead up. So we knit three, slip bead. I know that's kind of big, but we still do the same thing. Just put it right up to your knitting and then proceed knitting. Um, I'll show it to you in just one minute. Knit one, make sure you pull it kind of tight. Knit two, and slip that last one with yarn in front. Now when we turn that over, you see there we have the bead in the middle. Three stitches on each side of the bead. All right, we're on the right side, so we do a plain row. Knit five, slip the last one. Oop. One. Two. Three. Four. This is probably as large as I'd go for a bead um, on these bracelets, um, but I think it, it looks nice. You'll see the end pro product in just a minute. The final part of the video, the last couple rows of knitting plus sewing it on, I think is okay. So I'm only redoing this one little part. So, okay. So that's, that's how we go. We just keep doing the same thing now. We would just repeat these two rows over and over until it's long enough to go around your wrist. So I will see you again soon. So I'll get back to knitting this now. You can see I made some progress while the camera was off. Actually, it's overnight. And remember, I have six stitches. I am knitting across on the right side with slipping the last stitch of every row with the yarn in front. So now I am on the wrong side and I can tell which row I'm on by which beads are next. So um, it's the small beads. So I'll knit two, slip a bead. And then knit two again. Oop. Not time for that one yet. One, two, slip another bead. Knit one, put the yarn in front, and slip one. Okay, so now, um, as I said, you should measure um, around your wrist as you're going, and um, stop about one inch before the end of your wrist, and when you have this tail, you can just kind of like hang on to the tail and, and flip this around your wrist and come back up. And I got probably about an inch and a half there. So this is for my granddaughter, whose birthday party I'm going to tonight. So I think maybe I'll just still, I think she's probably got the same size wrist as me. I'll do one more set of rows. I'm gonna use this magnetic closure just like I used on these two sample ones. Um, there is some of the kit, I have these little kits made up for these. Um, and some of the kits have this kind of a closure where you put your, you attach to the ring and then you stick this through. Um, kind of like that it'll be. So it could be either kind of a closure that you get in a kit if you're buying the kit from me. Making up the kits is the fun part for me. I love uh, mixing, uh, mixing and matching kits, putting them together. I know some people hate that part. They just wanna buy it all 
ready to go, but for me, I like the mixing and matching and figuring out what looks good together. So, yeah, I'll have little kits made up. Each kit will make two bracelets, one of each style. Slip that last stitch. One of with the fancy, uh, extra fancy bead and one with just all, all the Toho beads. So, a couple more rows and we'll be there. I'm breaking this video up in a bunch of little parts, so I hope it all goes together cohesively. Wait and hope. Yeah, we have, I had oh, another pair of these little needles, exactly the same. I gave that to my daughter last night. Sorry for the quiet. Sometimes when I'm trying to get stuff done, I get quiet. Wait, oh, that was okay. Okay, so that was the big bead. You should try to end with the small beads just because I think it'll be easier to have the small beads closer to the clasp. Um, if it really messes with your size, you can probably do the other one, but if it's a horse apiece, go for ending with small. And uh, remember you're going to have two rows after your last row, plus your bind off and then the clasp. So that's why I'm telling you to end an inch before. So you want the room for the clasp, the room for those last two rows and bind off. What does the clasp take? Um, I'll set it here on this ruler. About three quarters of an inch is the clasp. So that gives you a quarter of an inch for those last two rows. So you might not, you might even be able to leave a little more than an inch between. And like, and I set it in the pattern and I'll, I'll say it again here. You want to stretch the bracelet when you're measuring it because it is garter stitch, it will stretch some initially. It should stop stretching once, you know, once you've worn it a time or two, because this is silk. It's, it's not cotton. It's 100% silk. Okay, so now let's measure again, now that I just did the small beads. Grab hold of the, the long tail you got. Wrap it around. Okay, now we got about an inch. So now I will do my last two plain rows and bind off. Then I'll get to show you how to attach it to the clasp. So, so I'll only take a minute. Maybe a minute and a half.
Okay, I did the plain two rows. I'll slide this extra beads out of my way. Once I cut the yarn, I'll, uh, oh, I did 16 again, look at that. Last time I think I had, six, no, 15 I counted. Uh, four left, so that means I did 16 of the big beads. Okay, now we're gonna bind off, just regular old bind off. Knit one, knit two, slip the first one over, knit one, slip the first one over, knit one. First one over. One. Slip the first one over. Last stitch. Knit one. Slip the first one over. Okay, and now yeah, put the yarn over, slip that stitch over, pull it tight. Leave a 12 inch tail or so again and pull it through. Okay, so now the knitting is done. Looks like this. Okay, so now I need to get my tapestry needle. Oop, throwing things. And I am gonna thread it. Now when you thread with yarn in a tapestry needle, you don't go try to push it through. You fold it in half over your needle, pinch it tight, come back, and then put your needle over. That will give you a nice um, smooth edge to push through. And then you pull that through. You may have noticed overnight I cut my big old thumbnails off too. They were just getting too long. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna turn this around because I like to go from right to left when I do this. You're gonna take um, your needle and go through that ring, the one that's, this one's highly magnetized, remember. The, uh, the ring has to be the ones that are like a keychain so that the yarn doesn't slip out. And then you're gonna go back around to under the first stitch. Pull it tight. Go back through the ring. Under the second stitch. back through the ring and you want to keep going across under every oops oops this one wrapped itself around you want to go through every stitch so you're gonna have six loops through this ring You want to make sure it's good and secure. And you want to pull them kind of tight. Okay. What's that one? Last one. Okay. And I. I tie knots. I know some people say never tie knots in your knitting, but I'll put the yarn through and then pull it through the loop like that. Okay, just to give it a little tightness. And then I'll weave it in. I'll go um, down here 
and weave it in just like I weave in anything else. Go across. I know people weave in their ends all different ways. This is how I do mine. And I was even thinking I might um, put a spot of glue on the end or fray check. But because I tied a knot, I'm not worried it's going to come out just to keep it from showing. Okay, so there's one side. And now I'll do this side the same. And I will have a, a bracelet. You can see there? It looks pretty nice. I'll do the same thing other side. And then uh, I'll have a, base, a bracelet to wear. It'll look like these. And as I said, this one's going to my granddaughter. And uh, these two I'll keep for samples in the store. So, and I'll make kits up. Your kid will make one like this and one like this. They'll be the same color yarn though, same color beads. Um, so if you want two different colors, you'll have to buy two different kits. I am setting the beads up like, this is the kit, the bead kit for this. It'll also come with two clasps and one of those uh, floss threaders to, to string your, bead, your beads onto the yarn. So we'll have many different colors. Like this set's going to be these pink ones with the pink yarn. Isn't that one pretty? And um, yeah, we'll have lots of sets, different colors. Check the website. Um, I will put them on there next week. And we're going to be set to go. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.